Yay. Woohoo. Hello, everybody. Thursday. Everyone's got a drink. That's a good Happy thing. Thursday. Drink. Drink. Yeah. Drink. Almost didn't. I was like, oh, shit. I got to run upstairs and get set up. Right, right. Oh, geez. I was trying to have a video where we didn't swear. Because, oh, but shit. Too late. Well, no. <laughs> like, oh, well. You got to tell like, us beforehand. Ah, like. We're, we're past the 30 seconds. It's okay. Something. No, nah, I don't know. Maybe. They're, they're really strict on the lives. Like, my lives get demonetized almost 50% of the time now. And wow. I'm like, you know, like, sometimes we only swear, like, three, four times in the entire hour, yeah. hour and a half. And like, that's that's a load of crap. That but, is. Because, yeah, sometimes they're really good. Or it's, yeah. you know, minor words, like, right. shit. What's yeah, the, uh... Shit's not I mean, bad. Shit's <laughs> not a swear word. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it's just a word. It's common parlance. What's the policy on regular videos? Um, if there is, I mean, so the F bomb, they're not real happy with period. And they'd prefer not to have any swearing in the first, like 30 seconds to a minute, minute and a half or whatever, (laughs) which I don't know why it matters if it's early or later. I mean, what's it? What? Okay. Whatever. (laughs) Um, but then like, it's just, I don't know. There's no, it's like, it's kind of a loose guidance where it's like, Hey, like try not to swear and yeah whatever it's it's lame it is lame i i don't know <laughs> the thing that's stupid is when you if you swear too much then they flag it as like limited monetization right and they say that that doesn't affect the algorithm but give me a break it does it clearly yeah. does yeah they're not right. going to push you ahead they of don't, something else. yeah they don't right. push the videos that have swearing mm-hmm. over the videos that don't have swearing so you pretty much you should not swear. <laughs> up, up, filtered what I was going to say. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's lame. It, it doesn't screw up your, like, super chats, though, right? They That's still the same? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fine. <clears throat> that's good. So I figure on the regular videos, I just quack out all the F-bombs now. I don't bleep out any shit because, I, again, I don't consider personally... I don't consider that a swear word. It's just yeah. like, give me a break. You see, yeah. there's dog shit. Is it, that's not, that's not like, oh my God, oh, my ears are bleeding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give yeah. Me a break. And like crap or damn or any of those, like whatever. Like yeah. this video already clearly is demonetized. So whatever, we might as well just go with it now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll try better next week. <laughs> 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 I don't care. Sorry. Like I don't make any money off the lives. Like the 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 ad revenue is pretty much zero. So woo-hoo, there, I just made more money. From there you that go. Right there. Thanks, John. Cheers, John. That just that just made more money than all of the ad revenue for this video. So there you go. <laughs> this video is going to hell. <laughs> and we're all on That's the right same chance. train. That's right. We'll see you there. Yeah. Josh is on vacation. Well deserved, so he is not here. He's on and PTO, as we call yeah, it. Yeah, PTO. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> the non existent PTO mm-hmm. for us. Oops. So yes. Um I don't think he's gonna be showing up. He can if he wants. I did send him the link, but probably not. Um yes. typing swear words in the chat box, I don't know if that affects it or not. Well, we have to release them. Like moderators have to release it, right? It won't. Yeah, a lot show of times up. if you swear, it won't show. So I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I, I don't know. Whatever, man. Like I, I don't really put a whole lot. I, it's not even that I care about the money coming from YouTube because it's really insignificant. It's I want the videos to get promoted when possible. Yeah, yep. you want that click through, right? Yeah. So, hey, obsessed garage. How you doing, oh, man? Hey, hey, nice. I'm uh, thinking about a four five eight speciality. Oh, what are things to look for when shopping? It seems colors other than red are hundred k less. Depends. Certain colors are actually way more than the red. Um, like some of the blues actually go up. But uh, I don't know. What do you what What are your like? You talking about like uh, as far as maintenance and stuff like that? I mean. It's effectively just a four of eight. So anything you look for in a four of eight, you're gonna look for in a speciale. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Trying to see what that yeah. past one on cars and bids just went for. 
There are you looking for a regular speciality or a special a pair to all right that's crazy idea. Talking. Email him a link. Talk about it live. Sure. Well, yeah, <laughs> let's talk about it. I, I love to yeah. I, speciality is my all time favorite color. Mm. Yeah. Like Matt is, Matt, if you're camerable and have a mic. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, we and, can we can invite you in if you yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Free time. Would off. you go for the aperta, Dan? Or keep Me? it no i don't Ooh. you're not a big convertible guy i mean it's a ferrari so it's all the buttons can still get sticky unfortunately <laughs> um i think it still has the same clamshell as the regular ferrari 58 so that could get sticky uh depending on how they did the binnacle i think if you have um nice. If you get the carbon fiber binnacle surrounding, that saves the binnacle area from getting sticky. Hmm. Um, oh, we could send you uh, here. I have your yeah. email. Sweet. Yeah, that'd be fun. Somewhere. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Huh. <laughs> mm. I don't know. It's somewhere in there. Send me an email, uh, Matt, if you get a second. I have your email somewhere. I It's going to take me five minutes to find it. <laughs> but anyway, send me an email, uh, dan at normalguysupercar.com. Anyway. But yeah, the the, uh, the speciale is... Mm, damn it. I want that car. I know. Uh -huh. So is, how close is Casey to getting one? Have you, are you guys looking for him or he hasn't asked, I I don't know I, he hasn't asked me to look he, Josh might be um, let's see how do you oh here it's it's easier than it to the link be. oh no. sorry oh it's that okay that's pretty simple <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's about what you'd expect it to be all right, where was the email I sent to you guys? There it is. I will Cheryl, can, you can think about it. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm, I'm thinking about it. Maybe too, that's about it. <laughs> I think a lot about a lot of cars. <laughs> yeah. I think about the speciality all the time. It doesn't mean I actually even buy one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious at what point do I start um, getting the itch for, for something else. Mm -hmm. I know I mean, it'll come. It'll always be there. Right. Yep. Itch is always there. Right. But it's subsided now. It's like, you know, I've, with the, the oh, 360 and. Yes. By the way, uh, Amable, is it, I can't remember, is it Amable or. I can't that sounds remember. right. That I'm, means I'm friendly in Spanish. But anyway, he has a junk company where they come and get your junk and he took and hauled away all of our shit. Here we go. Oh, There's nice. Matt. Hey, Matt. Yo. What's going on? So you're doing you you're trying to upgrade into the speciale world. <laughs> well, you know I'm not a Ferrari guy. I never have been. Haven't really had much of an interest. But the only car that interests me is a 458 speciale. You know, it's the it's sort of the end of analog, the best of analog, right? You know, the best of the best. I, I bought a 97 RS and I'm doing a giveaway and I'm making a pile of cash. So I'm like, well, maybe I could pull off a $700,000 speciality. Maybe I could do it. I can. You know? Oh, <laughs> darn. <laughs> you know? So, the, you know, the for the people watching that are familiar, you know, you do a giveaway, you buy a car, you sell a bunch of raffle tickets, if you will, T-shirts, things like that. I get to experience the car. I get to fix the car, do my mm -hmm. thing to it, make all kinds of content, and then I can get out of it because I always yep. spend too much money. Yep. I had to yep. buy a yep. car for too much, put too much cool stuff on it. Mm -hmm. You know, like you buy a twelve thousand dollar exhaust, you're not gonna get that back no. ever, never. And so the way I've been able to kind of experience a car and then exit has been to do you know essentially an online raffle. And so I pull the big gamble, you know, I've done like an M2 and a 1M and a, you know, and a Civic, you know, so I've done cars <laughs> yep. that cost me 100, 150K. I bought a $300,000 RS and rolled the dice and we've, I've, I've already, I've made my money back and I still have like 25 days left. So I'm good. Oh, nice. Nice. So then my gear started, I'm like, well, I didn't lose money. So let's go for it. And the yeah. car that I've always wanted to do was a 458 Speciale. And so I started looking around on, 
you know, auto trader, bring and trade, you know, just all the usual yeah, suspects. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I see some, some that appealed to me more like some of the silvers and some of the, you know, I wouldn't buy black, but some of the black cars, it seems like the red cars are 650, 680, similar yep. mileage. Yep. And then some of the silvers, which look way cooler to me are in the fives. Um, the, and, the and so catch, I, the big catch with silver is going to be reselling. It's going to be more difficult. So I, I, is the goal to, well, I'd raffle it. Right. So I'd raffle it. So then, so then yeah, yeah. So then honestly, yeah, go for the silver because it's cheaper. <laughs> well, the silver appeals to me more. You know, I'm not a big red car guy. Yeah. Um, I like boring. I like basic. And, um, you know. You fly under the radar with a speciality. <laughs> boring yeah. speciality. Yeah. <laughs> Would you drive it much, Matt? Is that the plan or kind of? Well, I, when I do the giveaway, so it normally takes me about six months, six or eight months to. I don't care what Ferrari guy thinks his car is dialed in. It's not to my spec. Right? Yeah. I can guarantee you that. Uh, and so I'm going to spend four or five, six months D, you know, old manning and, and D, you know, <laughs> fixing all the things that dudes do to their cars, mm -hmm. getting the scratches out, you know, dialing it into my spec. And so that's where I get to make all the content and kind of pre pre prepare yep. people for it. So I would probably drive it a thousand, eight hundred thousand miles, something like that, drive around town. Once you turn the giveaway on, kind of have to stop driving it because yeah. if i crash the thing yeah. you're gonna go bankrupt you know that's, so yeah. that's the that's the dicey part so my rs is parked it's done you know so i have to get all the yeah. driving in before you know before before the giveaway thing and cool. uh, and so what i learned to so the plan of the rs was to make enough money so i could buy one and i like it but i don't love it hmm. and so the one i bought isn't forgive the arrogance here it's not good enough for me it's a it's a driver I would want a museum piece that I, uh, you know, shine with a microfiber diaper. Uh, and so <laughs> I bought the giveaway one, hoping I could make enough money to then buy one for me. But now they're like 400. Yeah. And to spend that much money on finance my entire future on a car that I kind of like is not. Smart. Yeah, you're, you're going to spend that much. You want to love it. Yeah. And so the plan with the 458, I've never owned a Ferrari, never thought I could ever own a Ferrari. Um, and so this would be my foray into seeing if it was something I wanted to, you know, ruin my children's college future and the rest <laughs> of my life, you know. <laughs> I, I think you're going to like it. Although knowing you and your attention to detail, you're going to be appalled at the paint. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Ferrari paint, paint is Ferrari paint is shit. Yeah. It's just absolute shit. There's yeah, no now you it. can cover that up. You can you'll paint correct it, and then PPF. I would PPF the whole thing, you know. And so whatever the car had, I'd rip it off and redo it. But you have to deal with fish eyes and and mm -hmm. nibs and and yeah. you know deep deep sanding marks in the factory and stuff like that. So that that I'm I'm prepared for. So the question is. That I you, I don't think you can answer unless you own a car. You guys know this. Mm -hmm. Unless you own the car, mm -hmm. like you don't get the true. Like you can test drive, you can borrow a buddy's car, but it's not the same when you're invested in it. Yeah. So when oh, you right, own so, the car, yeah. you have it. It's in your garage. It's yours. You're making the payments on it, or you you know drafted the money out of your account to 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 get the thing. You don't really get to experience it until you do that. I I don't think. Right. Uh, and so I could go test drive a four or five eight all day, and I won't really know until I've had it for two or three months, mm -hmm. and then I'll know. You know, is this a path I want to head down? And then I get to share that with people. And as long as you're willing to take the heat from the internet, which you guys know very well is, is part of the deal, oh, as long yeah. as you're willing to take the heat and being honest and authentic with people, I think it's worth the you know it's worth the ju the juice you get out of squeezing that you know that orange and and you take a risk. I take a big risk by buying a really expensive car, but I think I could pull it off being as the RS was so popular and what's a better car than a GT 997 GT3 RS. It's a 458 speciality. You know? uh, giving away that car will break the internet. That's I mean, a hell of a giveaway. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'm going to enter that. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And you guys know this, be clear. We're not giving away squat, you know, I'm trying to yeah, figure out a way yeah. to get enough money and yeah. crowd fund the experience yep. and then again, change somebody's life. The problem is, you know, like I'm giving the RS to somebody in a few weeks and like, they're going to get a, a $300,000 1099. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they prepared <laughs> for that. I, I, I was say you have to actually. People don't understand. Like you, you're not getting the car totally free. You're still paying taxes on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. a hell of a lot of income when you make fifty thousand dollars a year, right. too. Yeah. So right. now you're now. So actually, it's two sixty, right? So we're gonna ten ninety nine for two sixty. I just wrote off all the all the modifications things I've done. So they're gonna ten ninety nine for two sixty. Imagine you're making fifty. Now you're making three tens. So you're gonna pay like Medicare sur tax, and you're gonna have. You know, you're going to be in a, you know, 39.6% tax bracket. Now, what all these guys, all all these companies do is they give cash Mm, with the car. Right. But that's an endless stupid loop because if I give you 90K cash to pay for the 90,000 tax, then you got to pay tax on the 90K. And so then I give you 50K to pay on the 90K and then you got to pay on the 50K and it goes all the way down. (laughs) So what do I give somebody? Three hundred thousand in cash, and you know it's 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 dumb. The whole. Thing. I mean, I think in that situation, you just gotta like give them the car and be like, "By the way, if you don't know already, you're gonna get whacked with the huge yeah, bill." So I, I, yeah, so I I spent a lot of time telling people that. And then imagine, imagine you're any of us, and you want a car for that you wanted three hundred k. Take out a, a loan, get a title loan for ninety thousand, pay your tax. You have a twelve hundred dollar a month payment on a three hundred thousand dollar car. <laughs> Oh no! Awesome. Yeah, yeah right. I think that'd be awesome. But if, yeah. you, if you can't swing that, sell the car and pay off your house. It's pretty. Yeah, quick, exactly. So. I mean, if mm-hmm. someone wins a speciality and they can't afford the tax on the speciality, they just got a over half million dollar asset. Right, right. I think you're gonna be, they're yep. gonna be okay. They're gonna do yeah. just fine. That's why I want to do it, you know. And then, and then even better is if somebody like that wins it like is in love with that car too oh and dude change their life i would and park like, that and drive the shit out of it and enjoy oh yeah, yeah. especially is the car for me it is yeah i think game. so i think it might be for me too but you know it's never been in the realm of possibility actually it, let me rephrase it, it was at 300 and now they're six yeah. yes right? like two yes. years later yeah so now i finally like feel i could i could like you know sell a kidney and get one and now I have to sell two kidneys to get one. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, like it's, it's left us all. And yeah. So, you know, inflation hasn't helped me out as much as it helped out the cars. Right. Yeah. So yeah. now yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, and so doing something crazy. So that's why I started looking for cars. And I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Like, the, the and if Ferrari it's a giveaway, world, honestly, try and find one with, with higher miles. I struggle with that. You know, I, there, I mean, <laughs> any way you dice it, it's going to have crappy paint. It's if it's been mm. stored anywhere that's not climate controlled, it probably have sticky buttons or the start of sticky buttons. Yeah. So, I mean, screw it. Like, get one that's got a little bit of miles because the specialities are really, really sensitive to miles. Like a a, a sub five thousand dollar speciality compared to a sub ten thousand mile sorry ten five thousand mile speciality versus a ten thousand mm. mile speciality, huge gap in, in value. Mm. And then, if, you know, if you could find like a unicorn that's actually been driven like 20,000 miles, which is, you know, exceedingly rare, those ones, you know, plummet in value. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of a double edged sword because my whole brand is perfection, yeah. right? But yeah. then there's also some value, like the RS that I bought wasn't perfect. And so that pursuit of trying to make it as perfect as I can is a better story to tell. Right. Um, yep. But then I feel kind of, I feel like I'm giving somebody a junk car, you know, because it's oh, got 10,000 miles. I mean, oh no, 10,000 miles. It's, <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be amazing if it was only like a. Yeah. There's one at a dealer. Oh, that's the other question I have for you guys. So oh. if I buy one from a dealer, do I get any cred for that? Do I get any Ferrari points for buying a used Speciale? For if it's like people? from a Ferrari dealer? Yeah. Like, for, I mean, if you go to the same. If you're if you establish a relationship with a Ferrari dealer, usually your local one, then it can help you if you're eventually buying new Ferraris and stuff. But if you're buying used Ferraris, it doesn't really matter. Mm, gotcha. So like if 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 you're gonna if your goal is like, hey, I want to start getting on the list to get the special Ferraris, then absolutely like establishing a relationship mm-hmm. with your local dealer is a is a good thing. And buying a speciale through your local dealer would absolutely help you because they're gonna be like, hell yeah, that's a huge that's a big buy. So let's say there's one uh, that the silver one I liked was at Ferrari San Francisco and mm-hmm. I'm in Orlando. And so do I go to Orlando and say, hey, go get that car for you me? You can. You can. Um, and a lot of times the dealers will trade and do something. 
But I mean, it, it again, it kind of depends on what your goals are. If you're going to try and get into that game, then I, I would probably do it. Me personally, I have zero interest in, in ever buying the, the new special cars. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I've bought from probably seven or eight different Ferrari dealerships and I don't care. Finding the right car or the one that yeah, you want. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that the new cars are going to interest me. And I, I went down that path with the, the local dealer to say, Hey, what, how does this work? Like, what, what, what would I realistically need to do if I wanted to buy like a new 488 or a new mm-hmm. Tributo or something like that? Like what, what needs to happen there? And he kind of explained the game you got to play and you got to go yep. to like all their like potluck dinners and all that crap, you know, you got to exactly. go to their track events. Our friend Casey oh, yeah. who just commented he is in the middle of that game right now. He's a big you know? time player. He's a big player in that game. And and let me tell you, like the stories about that are very fascinating. It's it's a weird, weird world. <laughs> Could you imagine though, once you get on the front of the wave, mm-hmm. you oh. get like the a eight twelve super fast, you get the four eight EDS. Yeah. People, people don't get like the all the people on the internet are like, I can't believe Ferrari does this. It's like once you get to that level. Ferrari's basically handing you free money. Yeah. Because every yeah. time they give you a new special car, you get to sell that car in six months, a year, two years, whatever, and make money every single time. It's amazing. Yeah. I just, I, and I know so many people like that. I'm like, they're so lucky. Like, yeah. It, it, it's not that they're lucky. They had to play the game, they had to buy right. the Californias and they had to buy the junk to get there. But yeah. then, then they, you know, every car they get, they sell back at three, four hundred over mm-hmm. what they paid for. As long as they take everything, they take it. But everything they take, and that that would pay for all of your car sins for all of the previous years of your life, right? <laughs> yeah, With like mm-hmm. like two of those deals. Yep. And then the rich just keep getting richer. I'm like, man, it, it's almost. That's why I thought about it. Like, could I just invest that time over the next ten years? It'd be it a sound investment to lose a bunch of money on some Californias or whatever, or whatever the, you know, the, the, right, the, right. the current version and then, you know, get some cool cars along the way. And then eventually you get whatever the new version of the Monza or yep, the yep. PDF or whatever. And then you get on the front of the game and you're buying, you know, $800,000 cars and selling them for a million two six months later. Right. That mm-hmm. would be incredible. And then that becomes Ooh. the new normal for you. Well, yeah. you realize even, <laughs> even if you're not, having to buy like the, the, you know, California, the lesser, whatever cars, even if they just start buying the new cars that are currently coming out. So like, let's say you start playing the game and you buy an F8. If you can mm-hmm. get to where you're buying an F8 and then sign it as soon as the contract's up or whatever, you probably aren't going to break even or make money on that car. So you're effectively getting a free car for six months, a year, whatever. And you're doing that over and over. Right. So you're really like, as long as you have the capital up front or not paying crazy interest, you're actually going to be making money the whole time, not just at the end game when you start getting the crazy stuff. Now, the the crappy part is like they want you to like obviously keep some of the cars they don't want. Like if you're flipping too much, like you know, it's a weird again, it's a weird balance, right? If you flip too much, oh, that's bad. But if you don't flip enough, oh, that's bad, too, because they want you to like the dealers want you to buy a new car, hold it for a little bit, sell it back to them so that they can mark it up and sell it for even more. Mm-hmm. So they, they know the game and they want to play it too. So it's crazy. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, don't know. I think Casey, Casey's already spent a couple million dollars in the last like year just playing the game, but I'm willing to bet. I don't know the numbers and he's probably not going to tell me, but I'm willing to bet he's probably made more than he's spent so far. Mm-hmm. That's the dream. Right. Generate a return yep. on your hobby, you know, or your love or your passion. Yeah. Especially stuff. when it's cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, oh, no, I'm going to have cool Ferraris sitting in my garage for a while. And so every two months he's going down there and specking out, you know, building mm-hmm. a new car, having a new obsession. Yep. And like, let me, this mm-hmm. one, let's put some tan leather here and let's do mm. this, yep. you know, the steering column. Let's do it in a stitch. And that is like a freaking dream right there. Oh, you know? I've, I've been in on when people spec cars and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, and of course, like the mm-hmm. trick is you got to learn the stuff that they don't tell you mm, so you yeah. ask like that's when they really start loving you is like mm. you're like oh i want to do this and like oh we can do that for you you know because <laughs> not it's not on the like oh here's like the it's a special you know, menu 
yeah like here's this menu. seven types of whatever things you can get and you're like no 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 i want this special whatever thing that's not listed like oh yeah we can do that mm-hmm. of course they don't tell you the trick is they don't tell you the price on anything until after you spec everything and then they hand you <laughs> a piece of paper a month later and they go oh here's how much crazy crap this is going to cost you yes or no and you know they give you like a month or whatever to decide but it's yeah. i feel like mclaren's got that game down like they'll put your logos yeah. in the carbon fiber and whatever yeah. you want oh, yeah. but you're paying them <laughs> oh yeah that's that's the thing like you can truly do almost anything you dream of on a ferrari you're yeah. just gonna pay for it yeah but you know like there's there's people who have established where they always order like the same spec or whatever and it's something unique and they love it right and so like they, they've built up this almost like a mm-hmm. brand within ferrari you know there's um I, God, I can't remember his name that one collector um older gentleman who's bought he got such into the game that they started allowing him to buy the last car made for every car that they produce <laughs> and oh, so at the end of it every single like person who was a executive in Ferrari and a engineer or whatever would sign the engine, like sign, sign underneath the, uh, the bonnet. And so he has That's all cool. these cars, they have all the signatures and they're all the last car made for that particular model. And he always spec them one of like two ways. And it like, so that just became this thing where I was like, Oh, we love you because you've bought, I mean, at that point he's probably bought 80, a hundred cars with them. Um, and it's just, insane collection i am trying to remember the name of it um so i just wonder what the risk is that if you're like you know if you're punching above your weight class if you will you know (laughs) right right right. yeah you're trying to get into this game where you don't have like you know some most of the people in that realm are like it's like it's it's a fraction right 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 a round off for them they're, they're saying well man if i move everything around and i postpone this this and that and i sell this this and that then i can start playing the game so that way that i can get there someday uh and be cost neutral or maybe cost positive on and then the key is getting the cars that you want i think of it as a as an older content creator do i make the investment in it now and, and take some risks so that way when i'm you know i have something to talk about when i'm 10 years older and now i'm getting every cool like mr jww like yeah. the, the guys that now they're you know they you know have the jack to be able yeah. to take on whatever car is or you know or tim Schmi, you know guys like that that have yep. the yep. capital to be able to then stay on the front of that wave yeah. and then you have some cool content especially you have a little different take on, you know, like Dan yeah. has a different take than I do. You know, we all have different takes on things. And so what maybe that take has some, some, I mean, some value. I, I think there's a lot of merit if you're able to do that. My Believe it or not, my brother and I have had multiple conversations about us doing this because I, I, I know that I probably could not get on that list because i've already burned that bridge right (laughs) like he could probably go buy some cars so i was like hey maybe if we pull our money together and you buy it you put it in your name they won't hopefully associate it with me and maybe we can start playing that game um I, i i absolutely think it's a reasonable thing to consider the question is though like where is ferrari going in the future because you know do people are people still gonna love the the newer stuff as they get more hybrids and all that mm-hmm. stuff I, I would assume so i mean the 296 is selling like crazy uh the the pure sangue is are you know basically like yeah, invite only yeah. um so I, I don't know i think it's a reasonable plan because it sounds like once you get in the game like where casey's at in the game then there's levels to the game yeah. right oh yeah you get to level one we're just we're talking about level one yeah yeah not not yeah. level three four five right where you're 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 driving in the ferrari challenge series you know right weekends, and you have you know, xx right. cars and stuff yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. i know I, I have another friend of mine who he's playing the game too but he is in the challenge stuff and yeah. is he uh oh yeah and is he's he already race? got he's got three challenge cars <laughs> and it, it, i was last time i was talking to him so I, you know, he bought his first challenge car. I'm like, that's awesome. He bought a 458 challenge car. I'm like, that's amazing, blah, blah. 
The next time I see him, he's like, oh, I bought a 488 challenge car. I'm like, oh, awesome. Mm. The next time I see him, he's like, well, I bought another 488 challenge car. I'm like, why'd you buy another? He's like, well, because it turns out when you have a race car, you need two because one's always broken. So you have to have two. I'm like, no. of course you do. You know, sure. But that's the mentality of, you know, his his whatever. But because of that and all the other cars he's gotten, I mean, Ferrari is just throwing shit at him. I mean, they're just like, here, you want some crazy crap? Absolutely. Have some crazy crap. Mm. Bachman collection. That was it. That's it. Yes. The Bachman collection, I got to see that in person a while back and it is just incredible. If you want to, see, there's not many pictures of it anywhere, mm -hmm. but it's insane. Absolutely insane. But I don't know. I, yeah. I, I would absolutely think it's a reasonable thing to consider. Obviously, there is still some risk, you know, like you could end up with a turd here or there. But I mean, if, if you were or, playing that game or you end up years, starting the game in 2006 and then yeah, like, oh, oh, you would be out and you're yeah, you'd, screwed, you know, well, yeah. you'd be doing yeah. great if you'd done it in 2006. The other you, the other fascinating thing that Fra I mean, Ferrari knows that people are playing this game, right? Sure. So they will allow you to leverage yourself through Ferrari Financial in really interesting ways. Like they yeah. don't report to your credit. Mm -hmm. So they don't right. report to any of the credit agencies if you go through Ferrari Financial, hmm. which is huge because a lot of these people have this huge debt to income ratio or whatever wow. because, you know, of normal loans. And Ferrari's like, we don't give a crap. Like, you know, but they, of course, like do their own background checks on your stuff. Yeah, so. off balance sheet um, debt is always a, a, a real advantage. Like I have a privately held mortgage on, you know, on the one uh, the property that I own that I rent out through Obsessed Garage. And. You know, it's a, you know, the guy held the mortgage on it. So it's off the books. It's just a yep. better thing to have. Nice. You know, I'll hold yeah. on to that debt forever because exactly. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't count against me if I'm trying to buy inventory or something yeah. like that. You know? Yeah. As Casey's pointing out, the hard part is a lot of the special cars, they do kind of want you to hold them. They don't like the flipping on some of the special cars. And like, that's, you know, everyone always talks about the whole, all the stories about the special cars and it really stems from the f40 people were flipping them and making money and Ferrari didn't like that so when the f50 came out you could not buy an f50 you could only lease it mm. and then after you leased it for a few years they would let you buy it mm. so it's uh but now they don't do that as far as but I'm then they of. make the call to you and say hey would you i have a buyer would you like to sell it to us yeah you know, yeah that, oh, yeah i mean that's if you if you establish a relationship with a dealer and you have some good stuff and you kind of let them know, hey, maybe I'm thinking about getting out of this car or yeah, whatever, yeah. they will absolutely be like, oh, we can absolutely take care of that for you and and find yeah. a buyer. Um, yeah, See, I know. I, I, you know, although it's a game, it's I think it's better than Porsche's game that doesn't have a game. Right? Well, there's Porsche no, there's no very random, right? It's it's, it's no it's control. Very random. It's dealership mm -hmm. by dealership. You know, and then, you know, from what I understand, Ferrari doesn't do like premiums, right? They don't do um, whatever that stupid thing they the markups. No, like that's yeah. the crazy part is even the special cars, you're paying MSRP for the right. new, new, not for new, yeah, not used. All, every single new Ferrari is sold at MSRP. And so Porsche's let it become the wild, wild west because there's a lot of dealers that have gotten screwed. They don't do markups, right? So yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I have a, deal, a my own dealer I buy from Porsche Wilmington in North Carolina, and they don't mark it up. Porsche so Ocala here, here locally, they don't mark up. So that's a really good question is um, when you, so like Ferraris all have a contract, right? That says they have first right of refusal. And I believe most of the time it says that they'll buy it at MSRP or they have the option to buy it at MSRP, or maybe they can offer you more if it's really crazy. But, um, and it's usually, I think six months, um, it depends on the car too. Some cars it can be longer. Some cars it can be shorter. I think. But I think they they will pay over like on like a TDF. They'll if they have a oh, buyer yeah. four hundred over, they'll buy it for two fifty over for oh, yeah. you yeah. easily. Yeah, and so yeah. They'll, they'll do that, and that's how you that's how you get on the front of the way. The rich get richer, you know. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting. Like they definitely, yeah. <clears throat> I had my very first um, where I sold my GD3 RS, my 991.2 for 65 over what I paid for it. 
Nice. So it was like my first ever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It paid for like one fifth of all the losses I've had in my life. <laughs> I was like, Man, this is great. Wouldn't this be cool if I could do this again? You, you took all the shoveling, you dig, dig in that hole, and then you took one shovel and went, mm. yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Dust in the sand on top. <laughs> that was cool, though, man. I couldn't imagine how cool that would feel to. Uh, to 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 be able to do that now i've cheated a little bit with the giveaway thing has has been profitable for me but i don't want to do that <laughs> forever you know it's kind of hokey i don't love the idea of it um yeah. and i'm thinking maybe the 458 would be my last run at that mm -hmm. last two raw at like doing something really big kind of going out on, on with a bang on that on that thing and see to probably run it for three months or something and I just couldn't I'm imagine. Curious, are you using a company to run the raffle? Because I know there's all sorts of weird laws on those things. Yeah, so it, it falls into gambling rules, right? Yeah. And so you have to follow the same rules as a lottery and gambling and stuff like that. And so um, we, I have an attorney who specializes in in, in um, you know social media type and sweepstakes type things. Um, most people that do it, they have their attorney. They have like a one stop shop that takes all the entries. I don't like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we've developed an app for Shopify with an app developer. It's called Viral Sweep. Uh, and so we install that application on the back end of our store. Uh, and so everyone that that you know and buys uh, eligible products, you know, so we we set it up so that every dollar you spend, you get an entry. Yep. Yep. Because the reason for that is douchebags can send in a note card and get a free entry in order for it to work yeah. when they say this there's you know you buy yeah, you have to be able to enter better odds free. right so there has to be a free entry and so none of us ever talk about that and so we then go manually i have somebody have to data entry all the manual entries we get all these weird old ladies and old men they, they like cut up readers digests and like use it as an envelope um, or some of the old ladies will decorate it with like sequins and oh, that's amazing! And really? Oh my god! They are like out. a pull out of a hat or something like that. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> wow. So there's these sweepers Facebook groups where like the 45 year old cat lady goes and finds all the sweepstakes, <laughs> and then they get all the 80 year old their 80 year old followers in the Facebook groups, and then they start spam. They start sending you all this mail. Oh, that's uh, and incredible. So we have all that mail coming in. You, we, you Google search and you see they live in like a like a single wide in like Palatka, Florida. And the guy's <laughs> got like shaky handwriting and he, you know, it's got, it's got like a coffee stain on the on the envelope. Yes. And it's just it's crazy. <laughs> Betty, we're going to hit big this time. <laughs> yeah. And so I hope that Betty wins because <laughs> Betty will probably take like 30 G's for my car. So you look, you don't yeah. want to deal with this, Betty. Let me just buy it back from you. Yeah, really, yeah. really. Yeah. Yep. Or, Do you go, or uh, even better, I'm going to take my camera crew to drop the GD3RS to Betty's house, right? Yeah. Yes. For single wife, she's going to come out with tennis ball walker. That'll make for a good story. <laughs> Do, Do you uh, go meet the the people who win it? Most of them I have. You know, some have come to pick it up for me. Okay. Um, we've dropped them off to some. Um, pretty much all of them, I've been able to tell the story, and that's been key. Cool. Yeah. So we do the, the, you do the yep. sweepstakes. You have to bond in Florida and New York, so you have to post bond against the price of the of the of the item, just so you can, don't run off with the money. Yep. And then you have to have proof that you have a random number generator. So the viral sweep software pulls in all the all of our you know yep. all data entry yep. and free entries, and then all of our sales. And the reason why we do one dollar per entry because it basically eradicates the freebies, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. if you spend you know five bucks, you're getting five entries. You can only send in one note card. Oh yeah. Some yeah, people yeah. will spend hundreds of dollars in stamps just sending us ten or hundred or fifty. But they only but get you one. Can only, we can only we only accept one. So you try to write the rules to eradicate some of that nonsense. Good, right? good. Yeah. Uh, and so then the chances of like no one who sent a free entry has won yet. Watch they'll win the three hundred thousand dollar car. And so then, then the beauty of the whole thing is I have six months or eight months leading up to it. Then I include everybody in the thing. We usually make some sort of documentary of why I'm doing this. Uh, and then um, I'm doing it different than anybody else because I'm building it for me. Uh, mm -hmm. And then by proxy, um, like, so I draw the line wherever I would draw the line, not just because it's a giveaway. That's why I'd be inclined to buy a lower mileage car because that's what I would do personally. Yeah, so that's yeah. my shtick. That's my branding of it. Sure. And then at the end of the day, you just add up how much should I spend? How much did I make? You know, you sell a bunch of t-shirts and crap. You can't sell like I can't just sell my normal items. I go broke. 
Yeah. So I yeah. can't just open up my normal store and sell all of my, you know, co ceramic coatings and lights and all that crap and flooring because, I, you know, I would go broke. You know, I still need my customers to buy what they buy normally, but then buy extra things. Yeah. Uh, and so this was the first time we did digital entries where they don't, hmm. it's basically a digital raffle ticket that that's really helped it out. Uh, and so then at the end of the day, you do the math and you say, well, you know, who, who wins anybody in the state, any of the 50 states. So, so I could be having to get the car to Hawaii somehow. Oof. Same thing with Canada, with, except for Quebec. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get it across the border if somebody Oof. wins. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then I'm going to change somebody's freaking life. You know, it's nice. Good. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, good. I'm, I'm could be one yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I've I've wanted to do big giveaways, but like they're just the legality of it scares me, and it seems like a yeah. Huge I mean, man. if you have the right, I can refer you to Sarah. It's it's actually pretty easy to do, um, but you just want to make sure you're squeaky clean um, in case you're audited that you have all the right yeah. documentation. Mm -hmm. You have so we have all that saved, and we have proof. You know, the random number generator. If you want to remove all liability, you can just hire an attorney. You pay them a much bigger percentage. But they take all they the entries. They all. take all of that. They do the yeah, drawing. Yeah. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to be. I wanted to be able to tell the story. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like I can tell the story better. And plus, I have a whole organization and team that can handle the you know all the all the clerical work behind the scenes to be able to do it. But it, it's it's been cool. I, this will be my seventh car. I did a garage. I did uh, several like pressure washers and other things that I've done. Like one guy won a pressure washer system and we flew out to Coeur d'Alene and installed it for him. <laughs> and um, and nice. so we've done lots of cool stuff. So I found it to be pretty fun to do as long as I can tell the story. You know, the guy who won my Civic SI that I spent 150 K on, <laughs> um, he was from Puerto Rico. His what? dad was from Puerto Rico. That's like That's the... Awesome. That's like the next, that's like the Mecca of Honda Civics. Yep. And so he was like beside himself. He still has the car, you know? And so that's awesome. I've gotten some real fortunate situations. The guy who won my E92 M3 has it, loves it. He goes to every car show all over the place. So it's been, it's been pretty cool. A couple of people flipped them, which I told them, fine hey. with me, I'll help you sell it. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. Once it's out of my possession, it's dead to me. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah i mean i hate to say it, but it's like it's it's got a different goal for you than it does for them yeah but it's been really cool to do and so you know and i've had such a great experience with this massive you know this gt3 rs a 997 gt3 rs it's such a fun experience and so my web guy saying we need to go big the numbers are showing mm -hmm. that we could do even bigger let's do the speciale oh, yeah. and so then i start shopping that's why i saw you guys probably mm -hmm. like these guys know ferraris let me let me mess with nice. see what they uh, think i would i would absolutely encourage you to consider it if you can make money on it and you can make more than it i mean absolutely even even it. if it, let's say that i didn't sell enough i mean I would still cover a good percentage of it, right? Sure. And so, it, and I could write it off as a sort of a marketing expense. So, let's say I spent five fifty on a special, a nice speciale, and I yeah. only raised like four hundred thousand in profitability. Um, I mean, I could, you know, it would be a stinger to take a hundred fifty thousand dollar hit. But what what did I gain in new Ferrari subscribers right. and things like that that could become mm -hmm. a new future customer at Obsessed yep. Garage? So I look at it that way. Right. Uh, and so even if I didn't pull it off, if I didn't make money on the giveaway, because that's really not the goal of it. The goal is to get out of the car that I spent too much money on and made too nice and then to engage people and, and have fun, you know, and, and really uh, selfishly is to experience something that I otherwise probably couldn't have experienced. Yeah. You know, yeah. like buying a 1M. I, you know, I knew I didn't want a 1M long term, but I knew I wanted to have one. And I knew if I bought one. I'd lose 50 K doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that's where the whole giveaway concept came in. It's like, man, I could get out of this and gain and then provide an equal exchange of value to the people watching. Uh, and so it's, it's worked out pretty well. And, and then I've been very transparent and very honest, like, Hey, I'm doing this. This isn't like a giveaway. Like I'm not, I'm not, there's not some benevolent charitable thing yeah. here. This is like, I'm hoping to provide you enough value that you would see merit in participating in it. Uh, I think I mean, where I'm going to get out of it. I would assume most people can like all your viewers who are actually buying your stuff and whatever, understand it. Like, Hey, yeah. this is not like a, this is not a charitable endeavor where it's like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, give away a ton of money to someone just because I'm nice. 
right? Yeah, like, give me and anybody break. smart knows when you're being fake like that, you know? Yeah, and, exactly. and they want you to succeed. I mean, I want the businesses that I frequent to succeed. I want to mm-hmm. makes me feel good when they're doing well when I participated in it. And and when you when you do things like this, I think if you're authentic and transparent, you will turn some people off. But those people weren't going to participate anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. you're never gonna. You can. Uh, the truth of the internet or, or on YouTube, especially, is you're not gonna make everyone happy no matter right. what. You can't. It's impossible. Right. So you do the best you can, and it's you know whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you already answered it, saying you know have separate products from your you know normal stock that your customers are already buying. But like I think I don't remember which one it was one of your first giveaways. I remember you saying like oh, I was a little tight. Like we're close to not hitting that break even <clears> point. <throat> So I, you know, I guess that's a, a good learning lesson for anyone starting out doing that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you figure I have what? I probably have about a half a million followers, you know, because I have a lot of people that probably don't subscribe that watch. Sure. But I get an average of say fifteen thousand people watching a video. So really, I have a core audience of probably somewhere around you know a hundred thousand people um, is probably the core. You know, audience of what I have, and then probably another several hundred thousand casual, because like Dan, like what you do or what I do, when you're when you got when we're when we're like our audience is not going to watch every single video. In most no. cases, no. we're appealing to an older, more established, more successful you know generation, and so it's not like we're Danny Duncan and 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 fifteen year old boys are going to watch everything we do from now yeah. to forever. They're going to pick and choose. Uh, and so to pull off a three hundred thousand dollar giveaway, I'll probably make you know three or four hundred thousand net when it's all said and done. You got to have about a hundred thousand people to participate. Mm-hmm. Of those hundred thousand people, I only really had I'll probably have about maybe six or seven thousand customers mm-hmm. to make it pay off. <laughs> so, but so you've got to do sort of the law of large numbers. So we start with five hundred, then it goes down to you know a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like if you're cold calling. You make 10,000 dials to get a thousand people to pick up right. your phone to then get a hundred people to say yes, to then get two customers. Right. Yep, yep. So it's kind of that way in a giveaway. So if you have 50,000 subscribers and then you really have a core audience of 10,000 and then only, you know, only 10% are going to participate or 6% are going to participate, you can kind of do the math on how much you're going to be able to pull off. And then what's the socioeconomic status of your average follower? Yep. Yeah, and that's the dicey part on the whole thing. And now if you're, you know, Adam LZ and you have three and a half million subscribers, you can pull it off, you know, a little bit easier because and, and then your audience is willing to buy tchotchkes that have high margin. So there's a number of business factors to figure out. How it, to it, it, would you say all of your audience are car enthusiasts, Matt, or do you have other folks who are simply in the garages? Stuff. Um, stuff. I have stuff. a lot of wives that watch because of the house stuff. The wives of, of the husbands that watch me turn around the garage and because I'm doing appliances and I'm doing lighting in the house okay. and I'm talking about paint colors and yep. I built destination OG and Helen. And so a lot of, you know, <clears throat> but it's like, you know, it's 96% male, of course. Yeah. That's, that's mm-hmm. about the same here, but, yeah. but generally, you know, car people Cheryl with a house. heavy focus on detailing, of course, you know, detailing people. Yep. Is the, yeah. you know, and then, then just pick the car. So, BMW. I had a GT350 for a while. I have the Raptor audience. You know, I have the. You get the wave of those those enthusiasts. Yeah. I mean, the Ferrari will would bring a, a whole new wave. Yeah, and then the average yeah. value, yeah. lifetime value of those people. You know, some of the Ferrari population could be really great. You know, I feel like I feel like a substantial number of the Ferrari population already knows who you are because there is That's a true. there's a large overlap of that like more pedantic want perfection kind of caliber of person in the Ferrari world. I mean, because like, I think a lot of people like kind of put the Ferrari up on a pedestal as like, this is the ultimate goal. So therefore I should treat it as like this, like, you know, perfection thing. Mm. So I mean, I think you're like, you're like me, who's, who was preparing for Ferrari. So redoing my garage and discovered you through that. Right. I got the Ferrari. I'm still redoing the garage. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I would almost guarantee you the number of people who are like, oh, I'm going to buy a Ferrari. And then it's like, well, how do I wash this thing, right? It's going to yeah, stumble on. safe. Mm-hmm. Right, how control. do I wash this thing properly? How do I take yep. care of it properly? I, w- I would, well, correction, 
actually knowing being in the fry world i know for a fact that most of these dumbasses don't know what they're doing and they're washing it terribly because we buy the car and we go god what do they do this thing yeah so i there's wish a, more say there's a lot of opportunity available in, yes. the, in the marketplace for people <laughs> plus my you know dan you do this too i mean my style has always been to do me yeah right and, yep. and to it would be much smarter to like do some much better version, right? whatever right? Yeah. you'd be much smarter if you can't but then it becomes a job i don't want a job I had a yeah. job. I had jobs. I don't want a job anymore. 100%. I want to just love this. Yep. You know? I'm so in the same boat. That totally. means you don't get broad appeal, but yep. you get to have a lot of a lot more fun, I think. Yep. I, I 100% have sandbagged my channel almost intentionally in some ways by not doing crazy drama, whatever stuff, because I don't, I don't want to, and I don't give a shit. Like, that's not my goal. My goal is not, yeah. like, there is no way my channel will ever be multiple millions of subscribers or even a million subscribers i mean hell it's taken me forever to even get to a hundred thousand we're still not even there yet so tell me about it i mean i it took me for see i got to a hundred thousand i started in 2014 i think i got to a hundred thousand like 2018 yeah you know something well, like that i was hard. early so it should have been a lot easier you know, <laughs> I should have, you know should have been yeah. now what i've been doing lately is um i've been um running ads this is the first inorganics i've ever done um so i've been running ads of like let's say i did a documentary on okay. the gt3 rs mm -hmm. and so then i'm targeting like ferrari owners or porsche owners on youtube through you know google whatever i don't know the guy yeah. does it for me and so i pay a certain amount of money per month to like to show people that video to, to gain subscribership because we've been able to do some math, you know, how much does a subscriber, you know, on average generate in future revenue and we can do a calculation. Let's say I spent 20,000 bucks. It would take me, you know, 19 months to pay off that or whatever that number right, is. Right. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of that. So I've seen a little bit of growth. And then I'm about to do a, a thing with Adam LZ where I'm going to remodel his house in 30 days. And he has to double my subscriber base. So I might get to a million someday. I'm going to try. <laughs> so I've never tried to this point. I've, I've done what you've done. I've never cared. I still don't really care. Um, but I do know that there's a lot of people out there that probably we need to be in relationship with that they don't know about me yet or we don't know mm -hmm. of each other. Yeah, yet. yeah. But I, I got I got, to, a, I got an interesting that. proposition for you. If you do not decide to go down the ferrari game route if you decide i just want a speciale let us find you a speciale and, and and buy it wholesale from some dealer or whatever and then we'll sell it to you at wholesale okay all right i'll do that for you nice <laughs> nice because like if nothing else i just want to buy a speciale <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i just want to be able to drive it once and be like all right it's yours now <laughs> Well, we should do that anyway, because you have a large percentage, I'm sure, of your audience of Ferrari owners. Yeah. And a large percentage are probably for not like 488 TDF Ferrari owners, but yeah. they're like practical Ferrari oh, owners. Yeah. 360, right? so 430, yeah. bread and butter practical Ferrari. Ferrari owner, because the 488 TDF guy is not buying a raffle ticket from me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He doesn't and care. So yep. We need the we need the, you know, the the, the 360 Modena guy to buy, you know, buy a yep. raffle ticket. That's true. <laughs> Right, that's, that's right. I'll be buying to... one, Matt. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, right. I exactly. Like I want to touch it before I buy a raffle ticket for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to stop saying raffle. I'm going to get in trouble. Oh yeah, yeah. You it's know, not a yeah. raffle. That's right. No, it's, it's, a, not, it's a giveaway. Yeah. Giveaway. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember reading the the laws about that, and it was very specific. You got to yep. use the right terminology and whatever. I'd assume at some point, which would be kind of dumb because we have a willing purchaser and a willing, you know, whatever provider and nobody's getting duped here. Yeah. Somebody's going to mess it up for us. And then somebody's going to get, you know, sue, and then they're probably going to do away with it at some point. So yeah, I'm not, you know, some of these, some YouTubers have built their entire business on it. Oh, huge, you know? huge. You know, Somewhere or like just... that company 180 that just does, or 8080 or whatever it's called that just does. Yeah. I get to advertise all the time. It's mm -hmm. do them over and over and over again. They don't even really have a following. They just run ads. Yeah. You know, they run they run Facebook ads. It's just simple formula. They spend X amount. They generate 10 times that amount, and then they can give away a Ferrari or something like that, or a, or a Lamborghini. They do yeah. Lamborghinis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lamborghinis always get more attention than Ferraris, which 
yeah, I, I've I been know. watching your yeah. Lamborghini saga. So oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I hate, you know, like that, that car epitomizes everything I think of when I think of a Lamborghini <laughs> and it's not, it's generally not good. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, 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 I, I, I don't mclarens and 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 stuff like that like the ferrari even is a little above i'd almost rather have like a hundred gt3s is kind of my bag and so i just want to tiptoe into ferrari to see if maybe that maybe i'm missing something but Mm -hmm. i don't i don't even care how much money i'd have i really don't have like this big supercar desire you know i like the i like the porsche simplicity it's just Mm -hmm. i just like to have like 20 of them and all the same one and just a different color, you know, would be my dream to have, you know, have a bunch of them. I should have done I, a given away, giveaway on the purple lamb. I actually, I don't know how it even work with doing a giveaway on a car that's in our dealership. Mm-hmm. So I would assume that that you'd probably have to buy it. You'd have I'd to probably buy, to buy it, it from itself. myself. Yeah. And put it into my normal guy LLC and then yeah. give it away from that as opposed to selling it directly from the dealership. So, I mean, the thing I can do from the dealership is intentionally sell a car at a loss. So, like, that's what we did with that that giveaway, whatever whatever you want to call it. When we took the Malibu and we sold it for a dollar. Like, there's mm-hmm. no law that says I can't sell a car for a dollar. Yeah. Like, you know, they're, they're like, you're a dumbass. You're selling a car for a dollar. But, you know, but the trick is you can't do a you can't say oh, I'm going to sell a car for a dollar only if you do this other thing. Right. It, yeah. That's mm-hmm. where you can't have that. So we just said, Hey, we're just going to sell the car for a dollar period. And that's, that's legal. The whole thing is dicey. You know, the IRS, you know, has hired, you know, a, a substantial amount of eight, you know, agents you've seen, everybody's seen that in the news. And then um, we're in a weird space where there is some, some, some precedent that's starting to happen with some influencers that, you know, are being audited and then disallowed like these travel bloggers and stuff that write off everything. And yeah, um, I just got in a fight with my accountant about like my house is in like every video. Right. And yeah. so like this desk and this computer setup and these speakers and like the closet system. So I don't sell any of this stuff without my house. Yeah. But it's my, my, my CPA was arguing with me. He's like, well, think about it this way. If you, you wear a suit, if you're a you know lawyer and you can't write off the suit because you could wear the suit all day anywhere to a wedding or to you know to dinner or wherever so you can't write off the suit because it's not right. a uniform mm-hmm. and so it's like you can't write off your home office unless there's a separate entrance or that has to be a separate entrance hmm. it has to be detached like you have to have a wall up between your house you can't just write off a room in your house so I'm, i want to write off like my outdoor kitchen that i built because i sell outdoor kitchens now yeah, right? and he's. And I'm like, look, I'm gonna gen- I'm gonna sell a million dollars in outdoor kitchens. I don't get to sell the million dollars in outdoor kitchens without an outdoor kitchen money to make the yeah. videos to show people. But that's I don't stupid. have a showroom because that's stupid. My showroom is YouTube and it's my house. And he's like, look, I'm telling you, you sit down in front of an IRS agent, he's gonna disallow all that crap. Yeah, I think that's like playing it super safe. Well, and then the other dicey part is that I would be more worried about is the cars. So yeah. I don't know how you'd write off the cars, but we call them a prop, right? So it's a prop. Mm. Um, and so that way I can take a full Section 179 deduction and depreciate the whole thing in, in a given year. For, for me now, I don't own any cars anymore. They're all in the dealership. So, so yeah, it's gotcha. Totally, it's super easy for me. It's the dealership bought it. The dealership sells it. Yep. I don't, I don't, like, I don't depreciate them or anything like that because it's all part of the dealership so it's actually making- probably because i can make a case for having a dealership you know because i do you know buy and sell quite a few cars every year yeah I, I don't know what the laws are there but like here it's pretty i mean the only weird thing is in texas you do have to have a physical location yeah i mean obsessed garage my headquarters would count yep. you know i always have cars there they're always on display yep. people are yep. always coming to see them um and and you know that i've thought about but the insurance that's where it becomes dicey the insurance oh, is pretty costly oof, uh, yes believe me so i have to me. make some money off of it somehow in order to offset the cost of that yeah the the crazy you got to think about like the insurance has to be able to cover like test drives and stuff so yeah, yeah. Ran, random dude is driving a quarter million dollar car <laughs> your insurance is pretty high yeah <laughs> yep. yeah 
So, eh, you know, <laughs> uh, pe people are asking what what about the dealership. There's so we we sold the one four thirty is gone. Uh, yeah, that went quick. Yeah. That went quick. It sold the day we listed the it. Uh, the nice. coupe. The coupe sold the day we listed, nice. it, and just today we bought a spider. Sweet. Okay, and it's a actually it's it's a repeat car. So we sold it, and then we bought it back again. So we'll be selling it again. So it's kind of cool. Nice. <laughs> Which we love we love that because now we already know the car, we already know everything about yeah. it, and so That's it makes great. it super super easy. Um, but it's a it's a Rosa Corsa tan, black Daytona stripes. It's the car that's if you saw my Instagram post about like three hours ago, it's that car. Yep. So but you're doing that full time now, right? You're not you left yeah. your career behind Remember we talked about this years ago. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I yep. Yeah, we yeah, this is all I do now. Do well, and I'll tell you the funny thing is, um when we talked, I remember specifically we talked about how YouTube is not the end goal, right? Yeah. yeah. And and it's funny is I've stuck with that as my primary motivation is like hey i want youtube to be a part of the equation but not the equation right and it's funny because i think a lot of the youtubers as they get more and more successful are realizing that sure and if you look at the youtubers who are going to have long legs they're not basing their primary source of income on youtube so you i mean you look right. at like cletus cletus mcfarland i mean hell you could even go as far as to the top you go to mr beast right yeah He's not making his future on YouTube. He's making his future on his companies that he's creating. But yeah. same thing with like Cletus and stuff like that. They're creating businesses that are supported by the YouTube as like a marketing effort or whatever. And that's funnel, what right. I'm, right. It's the top yeah. of funnel. That those guys that a lot of them that because they had they have such big views and they were able to generate so much Google AdSense. And then yeah. of course live reads. You know, that's any of those young guys I've ever talked to and say, look that this live reads i mean they'll dry up like that as soon as the economy yeah. turns i mean all that vc money you know for cove speakers and blue apron yeah. and, I mean, you see blue apron no longer even exists you don't see them anymore once they run out of vc money you know then they stop you know then that, that money dries up when when the economy gets tough you know there's none of that money available and so then all the live read you know revenue goes away yep. and so you've 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 potentially risked your reputation to be reading about something you know some ball cream or manscaped or something right and, and yep. eventually that money disappears you know yeah and so you need a brand and a business to hide behind uh when the google ad revenue and all that stuff goes away yep you know? yep so dan, so. dan your ver your first video was well, your first Ferrari videos were because you were trying to do an oil change, right? And mm -hmm. you couldn't find it. What about you, Matt? What what got you into to YouTube well, in the very I, I early days? Well, I many times. But I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and um, in 2014, I, I couldn't function, and I, um, I I met this goofy therapist. Like I'm a, uh, if you think I'm cocky now, I was such a prick, you know. Before, oh, really? I, I just thought <laughs> I was I wasn't chubby. I was at a straight hairline. Um, and I had I had what I thought the world by the balls. And I came from the trailer park, and I had a really successful financial practice. Mm. And I just I closed everybody out. I was I wouldn't even let my assistant open an account for me. Like I just thought it was just too wound too tightly, and it all came crashing down. I like totally melted down. And so I had to like humble myself and go and meet with a therapist and go to a psychiatrist. And they put me on some happy pills. And this goofy therapist, like he had like a artsy office where he like made his table. And I would have judged a person like that in the past. Okay. But I was like, please, just just help me. Whatever you say, I'll do whatever you say. And so I was so broken and humbled that I was able to kind of go on YouTube. I set the camera up and started talking to it as a form of therapy. And hmm. so I shared my like my, my detailing process. Uh, so I was actually I built the YouTube channel to support my journal on Renlist because I was journaling my GT3 ownership and journaling my F80 M3 ownership on M3 posts. And so I would write and writing helped me mm. sort of work my way Got back. It. Like I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was basically in an endless uh, panic attack loop for like mm. six months straight, or mm. maybe four months straight. Mm. And so I started making videos and I found that when I stood in front of the camera, what I didn't realize is I had a talent to sit there for an hour straight and ramble on about like right. technical topics. 
Sure. So I had no agenda. There was no, I was not interested. I didn't edit. So I just set the camera up and just mm-hmm. talked for like an hour and 15 minutes straight and just put it on YouTube. Like yeah. there was no, like, I didn't even like cut and make it any transition. Mm-hmm. So if there was dead space for 40 minutes, there was dead space for 40 minutes. And I just put it up there. Yep. And uh, so that's how I started doing it. And then I just kept that same agenda in that if it's, if I'm interested in something like Dan making a video that didn't exist, if mm-hmm. I have an interest, it, no matter how obscure it is, there's probably somebody else that would too. Right. right? And right. then I built this whole business from it, you know, by, yep, yep. by just sticking to that theme. You know, if I'm interested in it and e- even if, even if it's expensive, even if it seems frivolous, even if it seems mm-hmm. stupid, others might be as well. And I had no interest in retailing. I was going to, I thought this was a way for me to get clients as a financial advisor. Because I was doing golf lessons. I don't golf. I was doing wine tastings and I don't drink. Oh, well, that's too bad. You're all over the place. To old people in the villages, Florida, which is the biggest retirement community in the world, that I have nothing in common with. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm wearing a suit and I'm like, I'm from the trailer park, you know, and just faking it. And I was really good at the organization aspect of managing money, um, but I was really bad at the marketing aspect of it. it's not that I was bad. I was doing something I didn't love. And so I didn't do as much of it as I would like to. And so I thought my being authentic on YouTube could be a way for me to no longer have to do wine tastings. And I could mm-hmm. actually just talk about car wax. And then eventually people would start to figure out who I was. And then they would call me and I would manage their money because I was the guy to manage their money. I should still right. be doing that. Eventually I got fired from that for, for vlogging. So 2018, okay. I um, vlogged. Uh, two weeks of a day in the life of the obsessed, I call it. it was the first vlog I'd ever done. And I vlogged for two weeks straight and um, that got me fired. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I didn't know about that. That's crazy. So yeah. just, just for context, not for cockiness here, I was making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, like high, close to seven figures. And they fired me. Just walk, this, took it away, took away my 15 year practice and said, you're fired. You want to talk about that? That was my next bout with panic. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, luckily, I was already selling a few million of products on the side as my side hustle. You know, so a few million at a margin. I wasn't making a few million, but yeah, I was yeah. making a margin, you know, 20, 30% on that. And, uh, and so in June of 2018 is when I decided, well, I'll sell my house and cars and I'll get like a VW, you know, golf or something and I'll figure out a way to make it. I never had to do that because the business doubled and tripled and quadru- you know, and then before I knew what I had, you know, 30 employees and 40 employees. And so I, 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 um, they walked me out the door because I was being me and they thought it was too much of a risk. <laughs> and so here I am, I'm at Raymond James headquarters. I'd left Merrill Lynch, went to Raymond James and I was in Raymond James corporate headquarters with 12 people in a room with my videos. Imagine Dan, imagine your videos oh, on no. screen. And you're in a conference room with all these regulatory attorneys, the SEC and FINRA, and they're like what they're like pulling excerpts. They have like they handed a binder to everybody. And they're like, <laughs> so what did you mean by this? Or what did oh, you mean no. by that? And um, and oh, so then man. a few months later they walked in and just said, All right, you're out. Crazy. Man, I, it's funny, is I think there's a common thread where to be a successful YouTuber, and I'm not even qualifying myself as that, but I feel like there's a common theme where YouTubers who get success to some point end up either getting fired or quitting <laughs> from their quote unquote normal job. Because to be at a good level in YouTube, you have to be pretty much obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. You have to like eat, breathe, le- you know, sleep, whatever YouTube for years. I believe it. Like it takes that level of dedication. And that's every time, like, I don't know if you get that where people are like, oh, I'm a new YouTuber. How do I get to be a big YouTuber? And you're like, man. Those are the people that all, they always have like a subscribe to me shirt, right? And they're yeah. going around car shows with their goofy camera, right? And you know that they have no chance because they're right. missing the passion. Right. And yeah. you know that they made like 22 videos before they ever put one up because they're waiting for it to be perfect mm-hmm. and all of yeah. that. It's the yep. same old story. You have like 
YouTube was just an accident for me. It was an accident yeah. for you. And it was a, it was an accident for pretty much everybody I knew or know that has some success on it. Mm -hmm. And then it was driven by passion. I love yeah. cameras. I don't really love using the camera. I like shopping for the camera. Right? So <laughs> I love the camera. So that was, that was cool. Like get a new lens. And, and then I'm like, oh crap, I got to actually use this thing. Yeah. I loved the the sort of the pulpit or i'm standing on stage without the stage yeah so the camera to me is another human i get to interact with but i don't actually have to touch right <laughs> so i get to like tell my story to give my testimony to another person that's a camera that's not really a person so you have to have a bunch of little passions i think right. in order to be able to because because you can't do a nine to five job at it. It's, it's you got to do a lot more yeah. than that. There's no, I don't yeah. take vacations. Yeah. It's like, there's no, like, I'm going to take some time off. That's nonsense. Yeah. There's yeah. no time off. And you can't do that unless you love it. Yep. And mm -hmm. if you love it, then you'll do it like 16 hours a day for infinity. And yes. so I was a good financial advisor, but I wasn't, it wasn't like my calling. It wasn't my true passion. And so what happens with YouTube and making content and then the interaction um, with other humans is what the beauty of my humbling in 2014 was that it <laughs> allowed me to invite, like I would have never commented on your video. Now, I don't even know how I ended up, how am I in here now? I'm dominating the entire conversation. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> without, without the invitation, without that gracious yeah. invitation, humbling, none of this stuff happens. Now I have so many relationships in my life, whereas before... It was just me by myself and, mm. and, and mm -hmm. YouTube. It, there's just so, what I'm getting at. Is there's so many little ingredients that lead right. to it working and it can't be, yep. I've got a great idea. Let me invent a YouTube channel. It just doesn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The chances of that working are very, very, very. Like similar. any business. It's, well, it, the great businesses are, are born out of, of someone wanting to solve a problem, being so passionate about solving something, yeah. not wanting to necessarily build an empire. Maybe if you build 10 businesses, then you can say, I want to build an 11th and you have that experience and it's easier to, but for the first few, you gotta, you gotta be naive, right? Yeah. And not, you, not know what you're getting into. And just want honestly, to, yeah. having it, like, if you know now what you knew then, it would, oh, yeah, you would never it. do it. No oh, one yeah. would yeah. ever start it because no it's way. like, it's, it's, yeah. it's torturing. Like you're like, well, that and it would be contrived, right? Cause you know, yeah. and so then yeah. it wouldn't work because it'd be fake. You'd be, yep. you'd be, I know what this is supposed to look like. I'm going to put it together. And yeah. then people would mm -hmm. smell that, right? Mm -hmm. They would they would sniff it out. Actually, I had a I had a funny like battle within my own brain today because there's a video on a shoot. Um, I, 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 whatever, I might as well tell it. So now that I have those two 430s temporarily, I was like, oh, I should do a 430 coop versus 430 spider video, right? Nice. Like, I've never done that because I've never had both of them in the same garage. And my problem mentally was how do I approach this as though I don't know anything about these cars? Mm. Because for me now, I've, I'm so in the game that I walk up to it. I'm just like, yeah, here's everything different. Okay, great. Move on. Right. But I'm like, how do I dumb it down? No, not trying to be offensive, but like, how do I dumb it down to where it makes sense to be put into a video? So it's educational. So for someone who doesn't know about these cars. And so I was like, God, this is gonna be really tough for me to, go over it and and kind of like n not really like feign that i don't know these things but just to talk it up in a way that's exciting that's like but i'm not really like excited about it because i already know it you know it's like oh yeah like you know stupid things like the switch for the trunk won't turn you know won't open the trunk yeah. in the spider unless the key's in the ignition because you don't want someone walking up and popping your trunk while your keys aren't in the ignition just little things like that, that you learn, but like how you present that in a way that's exciting to people. So it's going to be, it's going to be a tough video for me to make um, just because, and I'm not trying to be arrogant, but like, I know so much about the 430 now that it's like, it's almost hard to like, what, mm -hmm. what do people not know about this car? Right. It's weird. It's a weird thing yeah, to those do. Kind of videos I find really hard to make when you're, when you have a theme, I mean, some people are really good at that, right? They're just, mm -hmm. they're good at like, you know, I'm going to make a specific video. My, the thing that's made it so easy for me and to be able to produce massive amounts of contents, cause I'm just, whatever I'm doing, like there's no preparation. 
there's no, I don't have to think about it. It's just yeah. turn the camera on and let's go, you know? Yep. Yep. And, and, and then, um, but you know, there's a disadvantage to doing that unpreparedness because it generally doesn't have broad appeal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. No, it, I've done, definitely done videos that are just like turn the camera on and go. And then I've had videos where I've like tried to think what I'm going to say in the video. And I like, but I'm, I've never scripted a video, yeah. um, but I've done like bullet points where it's like, Hey, hit these target points because they're important, right? And so I'll usually put it like on my cell phone or something like, here's the 10 bullet points I need to get across in this video. But I, yeah, this this one's, I probably have to go through this one twice, like go through it once, simulating it, writing notes, mm. and then go through it again. But the problem is I hate, like I don't ever do retakes. I mean, you guys have been around when I'm mm. filming, you know, yeah. I just don't because it loses the authenticity of the channel, yeah. right? Like, and that's, yeah. We've just never been a scripted channel, never done that. And so, like, I hate retakes because, like, trying to, like, act like you're excited again or, you know, oh, cool. <laughs> this thing. It's like, I'm not an actor. I can't do that. Like, I, I got excited the first time because, holy shit, that was amazing. And now, like, yeah, okay, that thing happened again. Yep. You know, it's like, ah, oh, it's tough. It's tough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, doing that McLaren comparison video, like, you have sold all three of those cars. So you've touched all three of them. Yeah. I've only seen one, you know, and then we literally like, but the camera off for like standing like, Oh, that's different. Let's talk about that. You know? And yeah. that, it felt original because it literally was, we were coming up with the stuff <laughs> right I, before we said it. Right, right, right. But yeah, there, when, yeah don't, there's a hard hundred other people that are better at it. Yeah. At doing the scripted with the, right. I can't even make that. What's that like car reviewer voice that everybody does. Oh, and I, can't, I can't even do it. <laughs> right. You know I'm saying? They sit in the car yeah. And you know they're doing a hundred takes, and there's a notebook on the seat, right. and they yep. lift it up, and then they and they're cutting all that yep. part out where they're just let me regurgitate this per paragraph, mm -hmm. let me regurgitate the other. Yeah. That's yeah. always so cool about Matt Farah is you know, Matt Farah is the originator of all of that, and he is a true savant at like reading magazines, like that was his thing as a kid, and so all these stats from reading magazines, so you can tell that some people just are a savant or. I don't know if you guys know uh, David Patterson, that dude in blue. Mm -hmm. He's a savant for like modified, you know, like the new modified generation. He eats, sleep, breathes all of those little parts and pieces of janky yeah. young guy cars. And uh, <laughs> so, so to try to do that. And that's what I think a lot of other young or, or new YouTubers try to do. They see some of they like, but they don't know how to veer into their into themselves. And so yeah. they're just <laughs> emulating yeah. somebody else that's doing it way better you know, I, I've, I've said this multiple times tim is the hardest working youtuber on planet earth oh, in my yeah. opinion like he busts his ass like when when we were hanging out in vegas and he showed me his like calendar <laughs> and i was just like you're an animal man it was just like nonstop, just packed of shit and i'm just like and he, I think he said he's produced a video a day and only missed like one or two days when he was like sick or something like that for over 10 years. Yeah. A video I think a day. it helps. Doesn't he fly? I think he flies private though. So that does help quite a bit. Yeah. Right. Right. He's he, to be fair, he's in his own caliber of whatever of life. Yeah. 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 But yeah. He, I mean, he, at the same time, like it's one of those where like I hate, I hate people who were like, born in with a silver spoon or whatever and, and life is easy but at the same time you can't fault someone who maybe was born with a silver spoon but they bust their ass you're like okay i can sure. still respect that yeah right? use that as leverage you know That's yeah exactly like, fantastic he didn't, right? he didn't just sit on it he actually took it and ran with it and that's that's impressive so that's cool like yeah, I, he's a good I, dude i've only met him a couple of times but i've been big timed by some youtubers before and he's never done that you know and yeah like he he's he, he you know, he, 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 he's, he's also kind of a student in the game because he kind of knows who everybody is, big and small. Yeah. Yep. You know? And then he goes and collaborates all over the darn place, which is really cool. Yep. Yeah, I need to get him to uh, do a collaboration. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, it's funny. No, it's, it's, it's an interesting world, man. I tell you, like the, the YouTube thing is, uh, it's so So what do you guys think of this? I bought, so my latest cockamamie scheme. Uh -oh. <laughs> So my back to the my obsessive compulsive disorder thing. This is the the curse that you probably couldn't imagine, but I can't really drive. 
So when I'm driving on the road and, and part of my, the root of my obsessive compulsive disorder is I pass out. So I get so wound up that I lose wow. consciousness. And it's usually in my, you know, most of my life, it's always been, I go to the doctor, I go to the hospital and that happens. Hmm. And so um, and there's been periods in my life where I couldn't even have this conversation with you because I'd, I'd be freaking out about it. So I, I'm, I'm much more stable just in normal life. But the one bastion or the one you know, thing held over is driving. Hmm. So I have this overwhelming angst and fear around what if I were to pass out when I was driving down the road, right? So, so I have all these cars and I can drive in like a two mile radius sometimes. And so okay. my latest cockamamie scheme is, you know what I need? I need a beater, right? Cause that'll make it a little <laughs> bit easier. For me. And so I need a manual, right? Mm -hmm. And, and by the way, I, I've been able to figure out how to make this obsessive compulsive disorder, this passing out thing, a real contribution to my life and the world, despite it being such a curse. So I've always tried to figure out a way to make it, make it, a, 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 you know, make it a contribution rather than a big de a detriment to my life. And so I start thinking, well, I'm going to get a Subaru STI hatch. Yes. A cool deal. You know, I've always yeah. of those. Um, and now I started searching and I'm going to get a beater. Now, my definition of beater might be a little different than most people. I would say that's a hell of a car. Like, yeah. Beater to me, you know, I want to find like a 7,500 mile or less one. 7,500 <laughs> mile? What yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to find find <laughs> Wait, for a hatch STI? Good luck. An obsessed I'm beater. Looking, right. I'm looking for a unicorn. So I call my buddy, uh, Tommy Effie, yeah, Tommy Farrell, who's like yeah, the yeah. JDM whisperer. Um, I text Adam LZ and, and my JDM, young JDM friends. And I said, you know, I was talking to Tommy. He's like, you know, I'm thinking about getting an STI hatch. You know anybody who has like a unicorn? I want it to be a beater. So my philosophy is that, you know, it's all wheel drive. It's technically a rally car. So if I get, you know, nervous, I can just pull off to the side. <laughs> I can't do that in my GT3 because it's too low or my M3, you know, it's too low. And so this is my cockamamie scheme, my crazy thought process. So Tommy says, you know, I don't know about STI, but have you considered an Evo? Ooh. Like, you know, that would be cool too. So because yeah. Evo is a little more collectible, yeah. the Evo crowd, it's kind of like Ferrari versus Ford, Porsche, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe Lamborghini versus Porsche. The STI is more the Lamborghini crowd and the, the Evo is more of the Porsche crowd, right? It's a little more, not all, but in general, a little bit more sophisticated. So you might find a nice Evo. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. I'm going to get me this beater. And so I start searching on Auto Trader. I'm like, I'm going to look for Evos, STIs. And um, I bought a uh, $76,000, 1900 mile Evo 8. Oh my God. <laughs> like the that's best your, car ever. Wait, wait, that's your beat. That's yeah, awesome. A terrible idea. <laughs> oh so my I Lord. Card on me and I got another <laughs> unicorn car that, um, yeah. So. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yours and my definition of beater is starkly different. So the I, call, you know again, I wasn't trying to backfire on me. I, I, like, I would well, be curious. Have you done exposure therapy? Because we should throw you in some of my, like, calif <laughs> you know, my beaters. Because I think that right there. <laughs> so it's an MR05 MR uh, Evo 8. I wanted to do Evo 9, nice. but I couldn't, you know, the Evo 8. with It had 1,947 miles. Original tires, original fluids, original belts, original um, Holy cow. Um, battery, um, original everything. And then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tear it all apart and put all kinds of aftermarket parts on it, which is going to hack a lot of people off. Hey, you know what? Do what you want. I don't care. That's but, So my beater is going to become this freaking unicorn. And it's going to completely backfire on me. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Talk, about a, talk about a beater. Oh, there it is. The Malibu Max was a beater. That... Actually, it was kind of liberating to drive because it was so bad. Like I just you can't. Know. I can't do it. I oh, drive. Dude, yeah. I just, I got it. drive. It's 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 liberating because you have a car that you literally don't give a fuck about. I mean, you can do anything to you could you pull it up and like we were so we're driving it home from buying it and Josh rams it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting there at a stoplight. So I'm like boom. I'm like oh, so that's how it's gonna be. All right. I mean, it was amazing. It's amazing. Okay. You got to try. Wanna, I want to have that life in some ways. You know, I want to. 
I want to be able to let go like that. Oh, we can I, make it happen. Yeah. We can make this happen. I, I, I tried an exercise. I was going to buy like a you know fifty thousand mile STI hatch, and and it turned into I want a seventy five hundred mile or less STI hatch. Oof. And then I found the darn even. I'm like, oh, then I then the business head start like, well, if I get an Evo, that's a whole nother audience I could bring in. It'd be kind of fun to mess with. And then lots of tuner parts. And so I think I'm like 17K into parts already. I've already ordered. Oh, um, yeah. Nice. So it's not going well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going well. Oh, just just for clarification, generally speaking, we don't have like special guests like matt we just kind yeah. of do our own little thing but sometimes we've had we've had it's weird we've had random youtubers show up and be like hey let me join in and we're like okay sure yeah so the, I mean, the random ones are so fun that's what i know it, it, it's always hilarious because we'll just yep. be sitting there and all of a sudden you know someone shows up and like oh hey that's, you know that's that. a, just an innocent question and we're like hey come on and join yeah and like naturally the, we want to give you the the floor because it's once once in a while so yeah you know it's like how often do we get to yeah, have someone other than the three of us are josh on the channel <laughs> yep. exactly although we, we still need to do the uh the wives that would be yes uh, meg agreed said last week in. i yep. talked to meg she said she's in so sometime when allison gets back we can like uh, what we should do is have all of us be in one room on one camera that's got no microphone yes oh, so we're just reacting. watching <laughs> we're just reacting and watching and then the, the wives will be on two other screens and you know that would be Fantastic. I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. Just getting the yeah. facial expressions. Yeah. Just because yeah. you know they're going to say stuff that we don't like. <laughs> like, um, you guys have seen Ed Bullion's VinWiki channel, right? I'm sure oh, yeah. you, you know Ed. And so, if you've ever been on, on the thing, Ed has this like, so he's like sitting, like you're on camera, and he's like sitting far away, and like he doesn't say anything because you're telling the story, but he's like, he has this like expression <laughs> where he's walking you through without saying a word with his facial expression. He's huh. like, like it's like the craziest. He has this really uncanny talent. <laughs> nice. And I wish he would put a can. He needs to put like the you know little screen up in the corner with his face <laughs> while they're the telling reaction cam stories. Were you were you on he, that, Matt? Uh, well, I did his garage, and so okay. we did yeah. like it was probably what two and a half years ago, three years ago, two years ago. Um, where I built his garage, so I told several stories, you know, okay. while, while I was there. Because yeah, it, it, it sounds distracting having someone over there just just nodding and giving you facial. No, because he helped you out because you're in there telling a story, yeah. and you like you try to figure out well, what story am I going to tell? And so uh -huh. his facial expressions while he's looking at you, he's kind of guiding you. Mm. It's really interesting. Okay, it's like he's <laughs> guiding you. Um, that's why I thought it was kind of interesting. If you guys were on camera and your wives were talking, they'd kind of be peeking <laughs> over to see if you kind of guide them with how much you're laughing at whatever they're saying. That would be kind of fun. That's a good idea. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Did you? Here's an actual fry question. We should probably have at least one of them there. The <laughs> Did anyone ever fit the energy control arm bushings? Probably on the 360. Can you sell them? But I guess you'd never figured it out. Thanks for your video, though. We enjoyed them. I don't know anything about that particular bushing. So I wish I could say I knew, but I don't. <laughs> so sorry. Um, as far as I'm still mad that Dan never did a VinWiki. I've talked to Ed a few times. He, I just, I don't know. I just haven't really had the chance or... I don't know. I, I've tried to th think about like what would be a great story for VinWiki from my experience. You know, I think probably the top of that list would be the CNC saga, right? I mean, that mm, probably true. is, you know, like if you haven't heard of the CNC stuff, that would be VinWiki worthy. Yeah, that definitely would. Yeah. But I can't really, like, I don't know, like, you know. You have a lot of in little interesting uh, one off buyer sagas, but. Might not be yeah. worth worth an entire VinWiki. Yeah, like you can't tell a yeah. whole story about. Well, I guess you could if it was a reasonable enough thing. Speaking of interesting buyer stuff, you remember we were talking about that kid that tried to scam us oh, yeah. on the Huracan. <laughs> that was awesome. I was loving that. The dude who owned the eight twelve got a hold of me, and nuts. told his side of the story. So the kid totally 
sent him like a fake wire and try like he said he sent a wire but then it didn't come through and then he sent him an ach but the ach was wrong and so it did a clawback or something i don't know but basically he was trying to scam this dude out of an a12 gts yeah and twenty thousand dollars and twenty thousand dollars which Unreal. is real this 20 year old kid right 19 yeah yeah 17 yeah so i mean yeah I kind of he gave me his phone number. I should probably call the guy and interview him and tell that story in a video because it's like to see the other like we saw our side of it obviously and we were like clearly we were like this is not right like there's no way that someone's selling an A12 GTS for 500 grand right now like give me a break and and so we were just we, you know the red flags were up all over from us so from the start we're like no but he was trying to act like a real buyer to that guy. And I think that that, you know, would be an interesting side of the story. So anyway, um, well, shit, it's been an hour and a half. So oh, yeah. that's uh, wow. This went fast, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be making my kids dinner and then um, they're yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, my wife is out of town and I'm like, I just I was sitting there ignoring them. And I commented and then you're like, well, come on in. I'm like, well, OK, let's do it. <laughs> Well, yeah. I'm glad you you wasted an hour yeah, and a half. Thanks for with me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks cool. for coming. Feel free to swing by anytime. We do it every Thursday night. But uh, all right, guys, we're gonna we're we're gonna do it. That's gonna do it for this fun. So uh, next Thursday, we'll see you guys then. But uh, you you're welcome to stay around if you want afterwards, Matt. We always chat a little bit. So if you have any more questions or anything, just feel free. Otherwise, if you gotta go, uh, we'll see you. Yeah, I should probably go put these kids to bed. It's 10:30. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Thanks, all everyone. Right. See you, everyone. Cool. Yeah. See you, man. Night. See you guys.